Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Outer Diagnostics. Today we have a 2007 Acura RDX with the 2.3 liter four cylinder iVTEC turbo power plant. That is the first turbo Honda I've ever worked on. Uh, and the customer complaint has to do with the turbo system. He said, um, car has 210,000 miles on it by the way, so it, it drives actually pretty well. But recently a check engine light started coming on. And the code that's being set is for the turbocharger system performance, the P2263 uh, turbocharger boost system performance problem. <clears throat> so, uh, history on the vehicle, the owner said this code has come on before, I think three years ago, and what he did to fix it was replace a loose wastegate actuator um, rod or uh, linkage so this hole here gets elongated and then your wastegate can't be controlled very uh, <clears throat> accurately by this actuator. It's a vacuum actuator controlled by an electric solenoid. So he replaced this part with a hardened whatever aftermarket steel unit he said the code went away for three years, but now it's back. So are we dealing with a similar problem, or is there something else? Let's look up the description and operation of the system. So under the uh, P2263, Honda gives a pretty nice explanation of the air intake system, including the turbocharger. <clears throat> so... Let's just take a look at this picture. There's the turbo. There's the intake manifold. There's a charge air cooler, air to air. <clears throat> uh, there's our air box, so the air comes in here. Gets boosted by the turbo, so the exhaust gases spin the turbo up. And let's take a look at the controls here. So we have a turbocharger boost control valve right here with a linkage. Then, we have a turbocharger wastegate control actuator right here with another linkage. And then finally, there's also a turbocharger bypass control valve. That's like the blow-off valve that's also energized by a separate solenoid. So three separate valves to control the pressure, the boost pressure in the system. So this code sets when, let's see, the engine is equipped with a mass airflow sensor to measure the amount of intake air, a turbo, turbocharger boost sensor to measure the boost pressure before the throttle, and a barometric barrel sensor to measure atmospheric pressure. Solenoids operate the turbo boost control valves. Turbocharger wastegate control valve, turbocharger bypass control valve are used to control boost pressure. Boost pressure characteristics are compared to intake air volume before boost pressure control, and if it is beyond a set value, it is diagnosed as a turbocharger boost system performance problem. So this is a logic problem. Execution once per driving cycle. And malfunction threshold, the degree of boost pressure rise delay is 0.1 or less for at least 4.2 seconds. This is a pretty sensitive measurement and basically it expects this much boost and this is the actual. It might be slow to build um, so it looks at TPS you, know, you basically stab the throttle and you should get pretty fast spooling and rise in pressure in your intake manifold. I took this car for a test drive. It, it seems to drive, you know, fine. It, especially for 210,000 miles, it's still got the get up and go. But apparently the computer is not quite happy with the performance of the system. So how do we go about diagnosing this? Um, we need live scan data for sure. Now, one more symptom that's kind of a, an effect of this is, he said the four-wheel drive, sometimes you get warning lights and it says the functional abnormalities of fuel emission or automatic transmission. So basically if there's a problem with the engine 
or the transmission, the all-wheel drive goes into kind of a limp state and you only get two-wheel drive. That's kind of annoying, especially when the weather is not great. If you have a check engine light, the car disables your all-wheel drive. That's annoying. So that's part of the customer complaint, but it's caused by this turbocharger system malfunction. So that's what we're going to focus on. And I took a couple of snapshots here while driving the car. <clears throat> There's APP and TPS. And basically, you want to look at turbocharger boost pressure as it rises, and also the map sensor that's uh, inside the intake manifold. And then what are these solenoids doing? There's the boost control solenoid, there's the turbocharger waste gate solenoid, which is at 100% most of the time since the wastegate's closed, ready to spool. And then this bypass solenoid return, basically your blow off valve. Okay. Here's another picture with some hard accelerations. <clears throat> There's a the throttle. So does our boost pressure build fast enough? Apparently it doesn't when you know the car is accelerating. You see the mass airflow sensors right there. There's the boost pressure and our map sensor in PSI. It reaches 25, so this turbo makes about, you know, this is atmosphere, about one atmosphere, about 14 PSI of boost. So, that's the before data. I want to locate all these components on the car, check for loose linkages, stuff like that, and then um, the owner said it only takes one drive to recreate the problem. So, we'll, uh, if we find any loose linkages, we can fix them, try to take it for a spin. I did notice it makes a weird rattling sound when you uh, you know when it's just idling and you kind of give it a little gas it's like it's rattles. Let's listen. So I'll let you listen to it. I want to know where that's coming from. I can see one linkage right there. I mean, there's quite the gap between the shaft and the actuator. So I don't know if that's an issue. And I'm not sure if that's the wastegate or the actual boost control. We'll have to locate both of those. I mean, it's, it's kind of loose right now. Let me shut the engine off and see if that comes down. That could be causing a rattling. Hmm. All right, so I assume this is our wastegate actuator and rod. And then the actual boost control actuator and rod lives in a completely impossible location. I have no idea if the camera is even going to see this, but I'll attempt it. Let's see here. So, probably won't even focus, but up there is, you know, if you see that rusty piece, that's the actuator and the rod goes to the right. Oh, <laughs> I just want to see if anything's loose, but man, that thing is buried in there. Maybe use a bore scope. Is that it? So 
Turn the bi-directional controls, turbo wastegate solenoid valve command. If we click on, solenoid definitely works. And that was solenoid activation. Let's try the boost control solenoid. Here a little click. Okay. And then the bypass control solenoid. Yep. That's this little guy right here controlling our blow off valve. So, in the wastegate control, we have this boost pressure test. Stop the engine, please ensure gear shift is a neutral set parking brake. Okay, please start the engine. Now the car doesn't crank. There he goes. That was another customer complaint. He thought he fixed it by replacing some really cut solenoid. No, nah, I don't think so. So, anyways, very interesting. It wasn't a dead battery. So please start engine, okay. You press the throttle fully while the diagnostic tools keep the boost control valve open. Release the pedal and the instruction appears. Repeat the above steps. Repeat one to three. Only ask the boost control valve closed. Test failed. Turbocharger system performance failure. Please, please refer to service manual. All right, I don't know if that was helpful, but I'm gonna review the video footage and see if that valve did anything. So interesting to note that this actuator is only energized by pressure, not vacuum. So I have my air nozzle hooked up to the top there. And when I give it a little air, There's quite a bit of blow-by. I don't know if that's normal. <laughs> Let's read up on this wastegate actuator uh, valve. So this uh, solenoid right here controls the turbocharged wastegate actuator. And it looks like in its normal state, It's connected to the pipe that goes before the throttle body to the intake manifold. So this is basically turbo pressure, atmosphere or above, that then gets fed through the solenoid to the wastegate actuator um, rod to the diaphragm there. So my question is, so let's say you're under boost. What does this solenoid do? Does it close? And this is by default closed or or what? When it opens, does it I have to read up on this turbocharger control system operation. It looks like it's just a diaphragm. It's not supposed to just let air through. Okay, information is key here. It's everything. Turbocharger wastegate control system. The system controls the wastegate control solenoid to prevent turbo from exceeding maximum boost pressure. The system is duty controlled by the PCM. The descriptions A and B are the two conditions of duty. Condition A, maximum duty, and condition B, minimum duty. At other times, the turbocharger wastegate control solenoid controls both the passages from the air intake air duct to a charger inlet connecting tube and intake air duct to a charger outlet pipe to the charger wastegate control actuator. Okay. Maximum duty. 
When the turbocharger boost sensor signal is lower than the upper limit, PCM turns on maximum duty the turbocharger wastegate control solenoid valve and opens the passage between the intake air duct, turbocharger inlet connecting tube, and a turbocharger wastegate control actuator and closes the passage from the intake air duct, turbocharger outlet pipe, and the turbocharger wastegate control actuator. The pressure at the turbocharger wastegate control actuator is freed to the intake air duct. Interesting. Turbocharger inlet connecting tube and the spring in the turbocharger wastegate control actuator closes the turbocharger wastegate control valve. So there's a spring in the wastegate control actuator. Yes, that is the case. In this condition, all the exhaust gas flows to the turbine. This increases the RPM of the turbine, increasing boost pressure. Okay? Minimum duty, when the turbocharger boost sensor signal reaches the upper limit, PCM turns off minimum duty the turbocharger weighs the control solenoid valve and opens the passage between the intake air duct, turbocharger outlet pipe, and the turbocharger weighs the control actuator and closes the passage from the intake air duct inlet connecting tube and the turbocharger weighs the control actuator. Boost pressure from the intake air duct outlet pipe pushes the turbocharger wastegate control actuator and opens the turbocharger wastegate control valve. Okay, this condition only a portion of the exhaust gas flows through the bypass passage, bypassing the turbocharger wastegate control valve, and the amount of exhaust gas to the turbocharger decreases. This decreases the RPM of the turbine, decreasing the boost pressure. Makes perfect sense. On our data capture, this solenoid is maximum field you know energized almost all the time except for when we're you can see we're in high boost here and it wants to cut it off boom it drops to zero and then the actuator is pushed down by pressure opening the wastegate it makes perfect sense so it is key for this turbo to build pressure efficiently for that wastegate to be completely closed most of the time unless you're under full boost and it reaches that maximum threshold I think that this play so I was editing the video and I thought that description and operation might have been a little bit confusing uh, to the to the viewer so bottom line is the actuator pressure actuator for the linkage for the wastegate valve that has a spring that pulls it up by default. Um, so if that linkage is loose, that means your wastegate valve isn't completely closed, isn't being pulled up against the seat. So the fact that the linkage is loose means that the wastegate is just a little bit open in default. It's not supposed to be. That's causing our slow boost pressure buildup. That's the key. That's why I'm going after this uh, loose linkage. So back to the video. Okay, so what I did, loosened the bottom lock nut there, 10 millimeter, and put a black mark on the adjuster. So what I'm going to do is turn the adjuster probably one turn until I can't move the wastegate. That rattle sound should disappear. Now it's a left-handed thread, so you have to turn it in the way of like you're unscrewing it. Okay, that was one turn. Did I loosen it up? I might have loosened it up. Let me uh, let me figure this out, and then we'll uh, let's try the other way. One more turn that way. Oh yeah, no more rattle. So I'm gonna finish that single turn. Use my mirror again. And uh, this, I think, Hopefully, this car should be fixed with just that simple adjustment. 
Okay, so I tightened up that linkage by about one and a half turns, so I got rid of the slop and then preloaded it a little bit against the spring in the actuator to give it room to wear some more. I mean, we don't want to just fix it barely, we want to fix it and then have some room for further wear. Tighten the lock nut so no more rattle of the wastegate and just double check that the linkage works. Sweet, no more rattle. Let's uh, test drive it and we can run that boost test again, see if it passes. All right, so let's go ahead and clear this trouble coat out. Yep. Okay, it's cleared. Now, actuation test. Wastegate control solenoid, boost pressure test. Okay, start the engine. <laughs> Is the starter going out? Okay. Okay, you just follow the instructions. I know it's scary, but you just depress the throttle wide open and hold it until the diagnostic tool instructs you to release it. All right, here we go. Release the throttle completely. Press the throttle wide open and hold it until uh, the diagnostic tool instructs you to release it. Here we go. Press it again. Test failed. Oh no. All right, let's take this thing for a test drive because we definitely fixed one of the problems. Hopefully, there's just one problem. Now, also, note the rattling sound is gone, so we definitely fix that. Now let's take it for a spin. All right, let's do a little zero to 60 run. Woo! Oh yeah, we got all the boost now. That's very good performance. Watch the turbo gauge, I want to spool up real quick. Spools up very nicely. Yeah, this thing wants to keep going and going and going, geez. <laughs> so I'll drive it around the block, cruise around in it, we'll scan it for codes, look at the data, I think this thing's fixed. That's my gut feeling. Well, I think this car is fixed. No trouble codes. Uh, let's see, what else do we have codes in? The, is it the ABS? Read fault code, no trouble code there. And I think it was the four wheel drive that had a um, four wheel steering SH all wheel drive. Super handling, that's what that stands for. So we'll clear this one out. Okay. I think that's it. We can check OBD2 readiness monitors. I mean, I feel pretty confident about this repair because last time it was the same code, 
and you replace that same part, tightened up the linkage, everything is great. Now the linkage is loose again. The part's not, you know, terribly worn out, so we just tighten up the linkage and back to normal. Uh, that's that's all I want to see. And just see which monitors are still in progress. So catalyst, EVAP, O2 sensor. Okay, no big deal. And uh, if the no crank condition returns, we'll save that for bonus footage, but that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. All right, a little bonus footage. How do you tell if your starter motor is going bad? One way to do it, to see if there's a bad segment on there, is just bump the key and keep doing that until the starter may stop functioning. So I'm gonna bump it. Hey, it's a no crank right now. <laughs> the starter is a reman car quest. Garbage, I'm just telling the guy to replace your starter again easy as that. So we can repeat the experiment. Just bump it. Right there. So we could repeat that with a test light on the uh, the control wire just to make sure the voltage is making it to the starter. But I have a suspicion the starter is just crappy. All right, super quick check of the starter. So old school, just a test light connected to the control wire right there. Just poke a little hole and the battery grounds. Whenever we crank it, Turn the key to crank, that should light up. If that lights up and the starter does not spin over, then we have a bad starter. Assuming that the feed to the starter, we, you know, we don't lose or the engine ground, which again, you can check pretty easily. So the starter positive post here. Hot. And the ground wire. I guess let's see. Let's see if we can recreate it. Said after it sits a while. It could happen. So bump it. It still works. Bump it. Started. There we go. Here, solemnly click, but the motor is not spinning. Nice. <laughs> so what do we do? Definitely want to put our test light on there. We'll crank it, that should not go out. That should have stayed lit. Okay, so we saw that the main positive feed was maintained in the starter. Last thing, check for engine ground. I just have it stuffed on a throttle body from battery positive. When we crank it, that light should stay lit if the ground is maintained. Here we go. <laughs> 
that's so cool. So how do we get this car to start? Well we can bang on the starters. Right now, reliably, it's stuck in its no crank mode. Uh huh. That's it. He needs a new starter, 100% diagnosed. If we get the job, we'll put one in. That's it for bonus footage. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.